Welcome to Know Before You Go for Trinity Sunday. My name is Father Brendan Curran, Dominican promoter for justice and peace for North America, joining you on this curious celebration in our church, the Holy Trinity. You know, just as we begin, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, my parents always reminded us growing up that when you pass in front of a church, make the sign of the cross, or whenever an ambulance comes by and we hear the siren, make your sign of the cross, remember to pray for them. This is a Sunday where, where it is full of symbols that we know so well, but so often leave them as a mystery of our Christian lives. This Sunday, we are invited to remember that this is a beautiful expression of the abundant presence of God in a marvelous and abundant ways that continually we learn from all of our years of Christian life. So God the Father, God the one who created us in this beautiful myriad of creation of the spring plants that are budding now and of all of the opportunity to see the cliffs and the seas and the mountains that sense of God, the Father, the Son. Maybe it's the one we know a bit more closely because we read about it in scriptures and the gospel stories of the cure and the blind man, of inviting the lepers and the outcasts alike in the journey of Christ. But we also remember the gifts of the Spirit we just celebrated just days before with Pentecost Sunday of receiving and celebrating the gifts of God's Spirit with us. That's an aspect and an emphasis and a foundation of what we celebrate in this Trinity Sunday. And each and every year, we get a wonderful depth, in-depth understanding of a bit of an aspect of these experiences of who God is, of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the abundant myriad ways in which God is present to each of us. Let us think about it in the different scriptures we have this day. This week, we think about the first one, the book of Deuteronomy. We hear the voice of Moses reminding and encouraging the Israelites, don't forget the foundations from which God has so accompanied you and loved you. We see the, those powerful words. Did you ever remember that remembering the days of old and in your time, ever since God cre created us upon the earth, Ask from one end of the sky to the other, who is God? Did anything so great ever happen before to humanity? Reminding them, don't forget to remind yourselves and be reminded as well the blessings you have received from God. Remember, Moses is speaking to Israelites, still uncertain about where they're going on their perilous and confusing journey with only a way to lean on what God is promising for them, full of its doubts and uncertainties. Moses is reassuring them to remember, do you not remember God who created us? Do you not remember God who is with us, that even gifted you with a sacred nation and reminded you that even in the times of conflicts, God was present to you? That's what we hear in the first reading. One aspect of remembering where God's presence is with them. We also hear in a powerful experience of the letter to the Romans, the experience of how God is reminding us that we are all children of God, God who created us, as we read in that letter to the Romans, remembering that second reading is a group of early Christian families who are in immediate threat from the authorities who want to eliminate them and all their movement and the sense of threat it gives to the government and the authorities. And remembering and reminding them in that letter, the phrases of, we have received the Spirit and are bearers of God's Spirit given to us, that we're all joined to Christ and that Christ suffers with us. In the second part of that second reading of the letter to the Romans, it is a letter full of reminders that they have been a suffering people but God has been suffering along with them, reminding them of the Christ that they learned about and have 
heard so many messages and stories and witness accounts about, reminding them with reassurance, do not lose hope, keep hope alive, and reminding them that the sufferings you may endure, remembering, let us remember that there are early Christian families and communities who are feeling immediate threat from the authorities. And so the, in the letter, it is reminding to these Roman families that we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ who also suffers with us in the sufferings we endure. A reminder to all of us that we too go through our own share of sufferings and a reminder of this Trinity Sunday that God is with us and is a reminder to us of ways in which we can point to of where God's abundant presence is with us in our journey. A fruitful reading, that second reading, to remind us of when times are tough. Is it too easy to just flippantly blame God instead of remembering that it's actually God at our side, riding us through the midst of the challenge struggles and lifting us up and over the obstacles that we endure. And then in this beautiful, powerful gospel story, it is the famous ending of the gospel of Matthew that we are sent to go out and baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. What a wonderful mixture on Trinity Sunday. We are left at the gospel story reminding one another and being nudged by our church through the scripture reading at the end of the gospel of the, of the book of Matthew, that we are called to understand and learn from the experiences of those who've gone before us, before Christ, in the midst of Christ like with us, who heals us and reassures us and stands at our side always, but also reminds us, I will always be with you to the ends of the earth. Go and tell the good news. Now, on Trinity Sunday, that sounds like a good experience of what? Ah, it's a calendar day. It's the Holy Trinity, God who created us. Okay, we kind of get that. Christ who redeems us, who came among us, became enfleshed with us in our own human struggles and our, our conflicts and rejections to remind us that there's new life even in death in the resurrection. And in case we lose hope, remembering the gifts of the Spirit. Does that have any meaning to us? I remember that the second reading speaks about that we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, as we read. If only we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. Now, you, someone could totally misunderstand that to say, well, suck it up and follow and lift up the cross of Christ. And that's a good stamp of approval for how you follow Christ. We can get it mixed up. A misunderstanding of some of the elements of the scriptures today that seek about, speak about our own sufferings and struggles in our midst. And I think about this week of Berto Aguayo, one of those students that I got to know on Chicago's South Side, back of the yards neighborhood. He grew up struggling immigrated into the United States as a little baby boy and grew up on Chicago's South Side and grew up growing up in a single mother household. And he struggled and flirted with being involved with gangs. Yes, Berto knew enough struggling and sufferings because he saw his own classmates getting shot or threatened through gang activity in their neighborhood that were prevalent and continue to be a, a struggle for some of the community today. But Berto was also guided by mentors and teachers in school who invited him to continue to continue on a path to consider being and finding his way through it all. And so as he got to finishing high school, many of those schools rejected him. That was his sense of struggling, not just through the struggles on street life, but also with the struggles of rejection and getting into a college, only being accepted by one, by Dominican University. Lots of adversity. Only being accepted by one that took a risk to deal with a kid who is a bit challenged and with plenty of problems on his resume. And they took a risk with him. 
Roberto found mentoring and affirmation of his own journey. And I say that because in this experience of this reading, we talk about our own human sufferings and remind ourselves we all have our own aches and pains and difficulties. But Berto went on to try to launch different efforts and activities after he graduated from college. He got involved and created a community-based organization in which he in his own founding of that organization got 700 kids jobs with the city of Chicago through one young guy who once was a gangbanger at the corners at 13 years old. And now, just two weeks ago, he was the one who walked across the aisle at graduation at Northwestern's prestigious law school. Yes, law school. He spoke the student address at Northwestern University just two weeks ago. It's a reminder to each of us that in the experience of the Trinity, of God the Father who created us and continues to share that creative power among us and with us, of God the Son, the Son who redeemed us, who reminds us that I will be with you to the end of time, that I will remind you that you can be healed, that you can be accompanied. I will be enfleshed in the midst of your human story so that you might have hope in me and then in the Holy Spirit, gifting us with those gifts of experiencing wisdom, understanding, and reassurance that we are now called and sent in this gospel story of Trinity Sunday. Go and baptize in my name to all the ends of the earth, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. When I think about the sufferings that we hear of in the second reading today, the letter to the Romans, I'm reminded this day of some setbacks in the life of Berto Aguayo, a young man who just recently graduated from college and even in law school, someone who had his share of setbacks, a single mom household, struggling to get by, flirted and joined gangs for a couple of years as a teenager, utter dangers in his journey, just like those early Christians were listening to the letter of the letter to the Romans in the second reading today. But it is reminding each of us of receiving the gifts of the Spirit, we can do marvelous things through the power of the creative experience of God who formed us in God's image and likeness. So thank you, Berto. You remind us of the life of the sacred Trinity who is with us, an utter and perfect community in our midst, of God who surrounds us, God who came before us, and God who proceeds after us and among us and in us, reminding each of us to go and bear the fruit of God, blessing and baptizing wherever our midst or even in the midst of our struggles may be. Let that be our gift of inspiration for others as we celebrate the sacred Trinity. Not just a myth, not just a scheme, but an absolute way of God's being with and among each of us. Blessings go and make a difference to the ends of the earth.